Looking at this section, IoT security and communication protocols. In the first video, communication protocols, we will be looking at two of the most famous adopted technologies in IoT for communication protocols, WebSockets and MQTT. The WebSockets enable the clients to receive updates only when they occur, without the client asking the server. It is an advanced technology that makes it possible to open an interactive communication session by opening a single TCP connection. So you can send messages to the server and receive event-driven response without having to pull or ask the server for any updates, which makes it bi-directional and full duplex where both parties send messages independently of each other. By the time it was standardized in 2011, applications like games, chat systems, web applications were taking full potential of it but due to its low latency and bi-directional nature, it is highly being adopted in IoT applications. So how it works? Initially, a client makes an HTTP request and asks the server to upgrade to WebSockets protocol. The server acknowledges the handshake as a response, and then the session is kept open and persistent for the entire time, unless until closed by any of the party. During the session is open, the data packets that are sent through and forth the client and the server are very small frame length of 2 to 14 bytes. Message queuing telemetry transport, in short MQTT, is a lightweight messaging transport protocol for machine to machine and Internet of Things. It is very bandwidth efficient that uses only two bytes overhead. It provides one to one, one to many, and many to many data streaming scenarios for device and applications. This is achieved by a publish and subscribe model where a specific data stream is sent over a certain topic and the device subscribed to that topic can receive the data. And this protocol runs on top of TCP IP network, which means that we can use this protocol over WebSocket layer as well. Now don't confuse MQTT with WebSockets. They both are different things. Consider MQTT is a delivery service that works on top of WebSockets. For example, take MQTT as DHL and the roads and the paths are provided by the WebSocket. So MQTT data packet is packed inside a WebSocket envelope, which is then wrapped inside a TCP IP envelope and sent over the internet. And similarly, it gets unpacked in the reverse order. So how MQTT works? The central communication point in the MQTT is the broker. It is in charge of dispatching all the messages between the sender and the receivers. Each client that publishes a message to the broker includes a topic inside the message. This topic is the routing information for the broker. It allows the broker to forward the message with matching topic so that the receiver who is subscribed to that topic receives the message. For example, a user can publish temperature on a topic called temperature and the broker forwards this data to air conditioner which is subscribed on the same topic and sets the desired temperature. So this makes the protocol highly scalable because the clients don't have to know each other. They just have to communicate over the topic. But the only drawback of this protocol is the central entity. If the broker dies, the entire communication will gonna drop. And there can be number of examples to give you for MQTT where a moisture sensor is mirroring moisture level and publishing to the topic garden, based on which the water pump turns itself on if the moisture level is low.